I'm with Paul Twyvey, the uh, founder and chief executive of uh, Your Square Mile. Um, after another successful um, event, or well, sort of documentary, we heard from Nick Hurd and Tessa Jal giving some cross-party support to Your Square Mile, and from a couple of fantastic local projects. So you're doing a great job in terms of bringing to the surface good stories locally, mm. getting some political consensus. Mm. What happens next? The question everybody asks is, looks like a good idea, but what are you bringing to the party? What are you doing that's different? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fair enough, and I think that's a very honest and, and you know, penetrating question that we need to answer. So I suppose the real work starts here. I mean, I'm very, very pleased we've done a national summit which has brought our 16 areas together today. It was interesting because we have Tessa Jow and Nick Hurd thinking very thoughtfully across the political divide about the real issues we have confronted them with. And as you say, we had two brilliant community leaders, both of whom are facing severe uh, financial problems but have a wonderful track record. Um, so the fact that we can, you know, I suppose, bridge the gap between this rather detached world of party conferences that has just finished and the real on-the-ground challenges of Richard in Manton and Bill in Pollock Shields is one of the things where I think we can make a difference because we are lucky enough to be supported at a very senior level now across the parties. Um, and we have, through our 16 pilots, I think, found, um, you know, the, the difficulties, the perils, the challenges, the practical issues of trying to run community projects in the ground. And I think we all feel incredibly humbled by not just the stories today, but everything that we've, that we've seen and learned. So I suppose we're acting as, as brokers between two separate worlds. That's one of the things we're doing. But I think in a more tangible sense, um, first of all, let me talk about um, yoursquaremile.co.uk. The point has been made, and I've made it myself, you know, we don't need more websites. We don't need more digital presence. But what I would say is, is go to the site because there is, I hope, in an attractive, fun, enjoyable, very practical form, a massive advice. Um, so it is a portal. It does give you information in a succinct way, and you only get down to a level of detail when you want to. And I think it starts from different viewpoints because we know really that the population probably divides into, into four. And this is something I haven't really talked about before. But there are people who are already active. And I think for those people who are already active, by joining the mutual, they can quickly build on some of the benefits we're providing and move forward. There are people who are, if you like, emotionally committed to a particular cause. It might be homelessness, could be crime prevention, could be drug addiction issues. Uh, but are only you know, really making progress, or in some cases starting to make progress on that one issue, but could develop their talents more broadly. And I think we've given them case histories and toolkits there. There are a huge swathe of people who emotionally want to give more, and when we look at our own research results, which show that 33% of people want to do more for their neighbours, 22% want to do more since the riots, but they don't actually know how. Uh, they don't know where to begin, and they also feel they don't have the time. So I think, as with everything we're doing, by bringing forward the very, very best of what the voluntary sector is already doing, because we're there to support that, and saying, look, an hour a week, um, time banking can be managed very, very effectively. By showing them case histories of things, by showing them how the police work, schools work, how they can affect these things, pull the levers of change. We're taking those people who are emotionally predisposed but don't know where to start and giving them the tools to start. And then there's a large body of people, possibly even 40% of the population, we think, who aren't really committed. In fact, they would say, I'm not really interested in this, I don't know what a mutual is, I, you know, I, I mean, I've got enough to look out for just to look after myself. And they would see a lot of this as kind of vague do-goodism. And for them, I think what we're saying is, okay, so do it because your neighbourhood, your community can give you a mass of things that you don't think about. Look on it selfishly, almost. Um, by saying, yeah, there's, there's massive resource there, there's help, there's skill, there's time, there's tools, there's talents just across the road that I'm too shy or too time pressured or too inward looking to approach, but you're giving me the courage to actually do that. But also, we're saying to people, fine, you know, volunteer and get benefits for that. Volunteer and get discounts off local authority uh, leisure facilities, for example. Um, get discounts off local shops. You know, we need a thriving local economy. This is not about some vague do-goodism. It is actually about having thriving local neighbourhoods 
which means a very wide variety of things. It means businesses actively engaging at local levels. It means supporting your community markets, your local retailers, rather than just talking about it. It means an exchange of time. It means sharing one lawnmower amongst 20 families rather than 100 lawnmowers in the streets used for you know, about 20 minutes a year. It's all of those things and more besides, and people finding it rewarding. We're not going to move forward unless we do that. Beyond that, we're now at a, you know, a really important phase because I think the, one of the points that we're looking towards is next year. I mean, next year we're going to have uh, the Olympics, the Paralympics, and we're going to have the Diamond Jubilee before that. We're going to have an unprecedented two, two or three months when people will be out in the streets, there will be communal events, there will be street parties, maybe 100,000 of them, all bringing people together. What's happened in the previous era, and we've never really quite had that massive lineup of Jubilee and Olympics and Paralympics ever before, but you know, we're going to get it now, um, is that there's been a rise in community spirit, a rise in a sense of sort of working together, and then it falls away. And a month later, everybody says, it was great, and I've got the photos, but that's it. We've got the opportunity, if we can get people to, to actually register and lead your square mile neighbourhoods, which is our next task, um, to actually continue that work, to let that spirit not evaporate, but to build on it. And also show the rest of the world what we're doing, that actually we are advancing things. I think also a, a very important point, which is, I know, to something that you're passionate about, um, is practical help. For example, there is no open single source of volunteering opportunities. You know, there is no one platform for all volunteering opportunities. So we are going to work with the big lottery and a lot of the big volunteering organisations and some of the smaller ones and say, right, let's build that platform. Let's make sure that anybody in the country who thinks they want to volunteer can go to a source where everything is easy to navigate by area, by topic, etc. That's the sort of thing we need. We need to push further on these CRB reforms. Because, as you know, once you start to volunteer, they are a massive hindrance if you're not careful, particularly to local charities. Um, so those kinds of practical measures are the next thing. This is really about toolkits. I'm a, a passionate, passionate admirer of the voluntary sector in this country. To, to just restate something that we said this morning, if the banks were too big uh, for us to let them fail and we had to bail them out, then the voluntary sector is too important to let us fail. So we have to confront many issues. One of those is if we can find a billion pounds, which the coalition government has done this week, for bin collections and for council tax, then surely we can find a billion pounds for our voluntary sector. You know, we need to recognise that. It isn't just about money. We need to recognise the need for all of us to form part of a thriving, happy local economy. We need to drive that forward. And the voluntary sector of this country is outstanding. It's struggling. It's fragile. It's demotivated. It is our collective responsibility to support it and liberate it and energise it. And, you know, that's, that's what we're all about. That making the most of the assets in the voluntary sector uh, <clears throat> and crossing over into corporates, private sector, small businesses, and making the most of this whole potential system of support and yes. energy, yes. kind of uh, at a national level, resonates with what people are doing at local level. Yes. As we heard uh, that in Manton and mm. elsewhere. Mm. Uh, look at the physical, human cap uh, capacity that you've got in your community, make the yes. most of that, yes. map it, and so yes. forth. So um, you're working at scale, mm. which I don't think anybody else is, mm. is really able mm. to do. Mm. Do you think you have that capacity to catalyse, help catalyse and broker at that national level? I hope so. I mean, I honestly don't know. I have to be honest with you. This is all a huge... I hope a powerful experiment in demonstrating things. Um, it's scary, uh, but it's also the most worthwhile thing I think my team and I have ever done. Um, so I hope we can, but you know, I have to be honest that we're, what we're trying to do is very, very ambitious. But I think that we're trying to do it on two scales simultaneously. Most energy is found in local neighbourhoods and communities, and that's the area we want to focus on. But then they need aggregating into some sense that they are a body of people across the UK. So we're trying to do both at the same time. But the ground up part of it is the most important part of it. And I'll give you an example is that I've been to, you know, I've done, as you know, because you've been to a lot of them, thousands of meetings and talks. And at one talk um, that I gave, somebody said, our library's been closed, and I wrote a letter to the government, and I've got nothing, and then looked at me in despair. 
And I said, I sympathise for your plight, I love libraries, but you're starting in the wrong place. Because what you need to do is look at all the other people who are successfully defending their libraries. Your power is local. Get the placards out, get the people together, get the petitions, march down to the town hall, get people outside the school gates, local, 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 local. And that localism then does get, actually, sometimes on the national news, but even if it doesn't, it doesn't matter, because your objective is local. This yawning gap between everyday problems people see and this rather distant world of politics and party conferences that we've just been through, you know, that's the real problem. And I think we need to say to people, be your own politicians. You know, that's what you need to do. Um, if we can ignite that spirit, if we can keep supporting it, if we can keep transferring really good ideas, you know, rapidly across the UK, I think we can. I think we can. I mean, it's, if, if it was down to our, our tiny little team, we clearly couldn't, but we're trying to catalyse, you know, 62 million people, or at least a fair proportion of them. And in our, in our studies, um, one, the equivalent of 1.7 million people out of the 62 million said they'd really like to lead. I, I suspect that may be quite realistic, and it may take some time for them to come out, but I think, you know, I think that's quite possible. When you think 25% of the country already volunteer monthly or more, I think it's possible we could find those leaders, and I really hope that we do. So, just thinking about that scale, finally, uh, National Trust have got three, four million um, members. They've launched into a campaign against government planning policies and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, not suggesting your square mile will be quite so political, mm -hmm. but uh, do you see a time in which you've got several million members mm -hmm. who collectively are sharing ideas, but yes. actually having some clout? Yeah, that's one of, the, one of our principal aims is exactly that, to, to be able to research people's attitudes, but more importantly to then take a body of those attitudes and, and lobby. As a citizen's mutual, if we really build that into the scale it should have, then I think it should have significant influence on, and on very specific issues such as National Trust. So supporting other people, um, but also um, you know, generating our, our, our own ideas. And I very much hope that will happen, that we will become a campaigning body. And if those members are paying their 10 quids or whatever, mm -hmm. then you have a source of income, which means you're not so dependent yep. on funders and the agendas that the funders want to prescribe. Precisely. Precisely. I mean, the thing is, we, we need to be self-sustaining, and we can be self-sustaining. We'll run it from a small nuclear centre. Um, we'll, uh, we'll always be trying to you know, get the best possible deals for your command, and any surplus that we make from member income will go towards helping communities. We'll also, I think, quite legitimately um, try and get other revenue. For example, polling. You know, if people want to do research amongst a wide body of citizens, then we can offer that service. I think that's entirely legitimate. Um, so, I, I, you know, I clearly don't want to be government-sponsored. I don't want to be beholden to big business. I want their support. Um, you know, I don't want to take uh, advertising or anything like that. We would like to be a self-sustaining mutual that plows all its surpluses and all its power back into communities.